Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with today's podcast um, from the Common Sense MD. Today I want to make something that's kind of complex, hopefully into something useful and common sense. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about mitochondria. Last week I talked about brain energy and the fact that mental illness um, is a really a problem with metabolism, especially mitochondrial metabolism. So I think we need to take kind of a deep dive and then at the end I'll have some common sense things for you to do to take care of your mitochondria. Um, so really as a review I wanted to talk about mitochondrial function as, re, as it relates to energy. And life is energy. Then I remembered that a good doctor friend of mine actually gave me a book on mitochondria this past year. So I, I went through that. It's, it's a book called Mitochondria and the Function and the Future of Medicine by Dr. Dr. Lee No. And I had to return to a lot of the biochemistry I learned in college and medical school because it gets deep uh, and how important this is and what you can do to improve the function of your mitochondria. To review, mitochondria are those tiny parts of each cell that are your energy factories. Um, they're kind of like, they act like a cellular digestive system that takes in the nutrients, breaks them down, and creates energy for the cell. All energy comes from these little powerhouses. Each cell contains hundreds to thousands of these mitochondria, and it just depends on the cell type. Some cell types need more mitochondria, like muscle, heart, and brain. They need the most. Cellular respiration is the most important job the mitochondria have. Not the only job, but the most important job. This means they break down food, nutrients, and combine this with oxygen to make energy. Now this gets real complex, involving the electron transport chain, remember that from biochemistry. Um, this is where protons are moved across membranes, oh, which is the central process of all life, the proton pump. Anyway, this chain of events, and there's a lot of them, result in oxidative phosphorylation, which means adding a phosphate to ADP, uh, which creates ATP, which is a source of all energy in life. Uh, so remember that, ATP. I'm sure you've heard of it. We talk about it all the time. Um, after energy production... The next most critical function of your mitochondria is regulating cellular death. When cells become worn out or damaged by mutations usually caused by toxins, inflammation, aging, sometimes drugs, alcohol, etc., they're forced to commit cellular suicide. It's called apoptosis. Uh, program cellular death. Remember that. If the mechanisms re re regulating this apoptosis fail, some serious consequences can occur, like cancer. Remember that. Uh, when that when that gets out of control, cancer results. Of all the theories of aging that we study in functional medicine. To me, the mitochondrial theory of aging makes the most sense. And this theory's main point is that the mitochondria are the body's main source of free radicals. Now, free radicals are oxygen-containing molecules with an uneven number of electrons that can damage other molecules. It's called oxidation. It's called oxidative stress. Think about rust. That's oxidative stress. That's aging. The mitochondria can repair these things, but if it's overwhelmed by free radicals, 
they can't keep up with the normal processes of the cell. They spend too much time repairing. They can't perform your regular things they need to do, like regenerate uh, all the time new cells and new forms of energy to keep everything going. So they can't keep up if they're overwhelmed. Free radicals are generated from immune cell activation, inflammation, poor diet, mental stress, excessive exercise, infections, ischemia, not getting enough blood supply, think heart attacks, cancer, and then just aging. So it's possible to slow down the aging process and delay or prevent diseases related to mitochondrial decay. A lot of it depends on their redox state. Now, when I talk about redox, redox medicine is a big thing. And that's whether these, your state is, oxid, is oxidized, bad, you have all these oxidized rat free radicals, or reduced, which is good. So these mitochondria send out transcription factors like NERF1 and NERF2 that stimulates the expression of genes that protect the cell until more mitochondria can generate. I know I've geeked out a lot on this a little bit right now, but I wanted to explain the conditions that mitochondrial dysfunction can cause and how to best prevent it. That's the whole point of this lecture. Uh, but it's complex, and unless you understand the complexities, you're not really going to be able to translate it into useful things. So that's kind of my job for you. Um, health conditions linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. Heart disease. Ang like angina. Hypertension. Congestive heart failure. Ischemia. Strokes and neurodegenerative diseases. Um, like Parkinson's that we talk about a lot. That we're seeing a ton of. Alzheimer's disease. ADHD. Depression diabetes, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, hearing loss, macular degeneration and glaucoma, aging skin, fertility, cancer. Cancer really happens when a single cell becomes selfish. It escapes the body's control and multiplies like bacteria can multiply. Cancers really are the result of genetic mutations with exceptions to that. Um, but typically, a cell must accumulate 8 to 10 mutations in specific genes before it can transform into a malignant cell. Normally, defective cells, no longer working towards the greater good of the body, are eliminated by apoptosis, programmed cellular death like we talked about. Um, this requires ATP. And so if you're overwhelming the mitochondria, you don't have enough ATP to repair and regenerate. In 1930, a famous German scientist named Otto Warburg received the Nobel Prize for discovering that cancers resulted from an impaired cellular respiration think mitochondrial dysfunction. In other words, cancer is a metabolic disorder. I strongly believe that. So, how do you go about protecting your mitochondria? Um, the first thing, of course, is always lifestyle. I always talk about the four things that I emphasize in my practice, like nutrition, what you eat, exercise, stress reduction, sleep, and hormone balance. Um, and remember, calorie restriction is the only proven thing to, expend li to extend lifespan, calorie restrictions. And especially if it's a very low-carb diet uh, combined with intermittent fasting, which I hugely believe in. Um, it keeps coming around to intermittent fasting is a great thing for almost every condition um, because that's where you get your regeneration, your cellular repair. Um, the first thing I would do if I had cancer or really or had Alzheimer's, it'd be a keto diet. There's no doubt in my mind it'd be a keto diet. 
Um, and so what, what do we do? How do we support our mitochondrial function? Well, it turns out there's some fantastic supplements for mitochondria. You know, I've been taking them for years, and I want to go over a few of them, a few of the important ones. Um, CoQ10. Everybody thinks about CoQ10 when they think about mitochondria. So it's a potent antioxidant. It's a membrane stabilizer. And it's a vital component of that important electron transport chain uh, that helps your mitochondria produce ATP. CoQ10 protects your heart. It lowers your blood pressure. It prevents oxidation of LDL, the bad cholesterol. And remember, statins deplete your CoQ10. Everybody that takes a statin has to take CoQ10. It helps prevent a lot of that, the muscle aches and energy depletion and a lot of other things that statins can cause. Um, and beta blockers also deplete CoQ10. CoQ10 protects your brain. Use the form ubiquinol. That's the one you need to use. It's better absorbed. Usually take it with food. It's also better absorbed with food. 100 milligrams is kind of a baseline dose for people that just are normal and don't have a lot of problems. For cardiovascular diseases, you can use anywhere from 200 to 600 milligrams. For neurologic conditions, 600 to 3,000. That's right, 3,000. It's perfectly safe. The only, the only person I probably wouldn't put on CoQ10 is somebody that was on Coumadin, Warfarin, the old-timey blood thinner that we don't use a lot of. Um, CoQ10 can get kind of expensive when you use a lot of it. That's kind of the only drawback. But um, CoQ10 is essential. I've been taking it for years. Um, another one I want to mention is another one I take every day. It's called D-ribose. And it's a simple five-carbon sugar that won't raise your blood sugar. I give it to my diabetic kids for energy every day. So it's safe for diabetics. It works by replenishing the purine pool. Now, I'm not going to get deep into the purine pool, but that's kind of how it works if you want to dig into it. Um, D-ribose is especially important for the heart. It wakes up dormant parts of your myocardium. Very underutilized in cardiology. Um, kind of like PQ, or PQQ and CoQ10 are underutilized by cardiologists. Um, I'll tell you, if I, if I was having a heart attack, I would beg for D-ribose because it can wake up those parts of your heart that you think are dead. Um, so think about D-ribose. I use it in powder form every morning. It's great for athletes. And I usually like to take it before exercise. It's great for people on the ketogenic diet. You need to take three to five grams a day of D-ribose. Now, a good combination to go with CoQ10 is something called PQQ. I'm not going to pronounce a long chemical name, but just remember PQQ. Actually, in my Dr. Rogers Energy Formula that I created, I put PQQ in with CoQ10 in one pill. And it's actually cheaper than CoQ10 alone because I got it um, customized. But anyway, PQQ is a cellular signaling vitamin that not only protects your mitochondria from oxidative damage, it actually stimulates the growth of new mitochondria. Now, that's big. Um, you can create new mitochondria. So CoQ10 makes... Your mitochondria create more ATP. PQQ actually makes your cells create more mitochondria. Um, it's very neuroprotective. It stimulates something called nerve growth factor. It's very important for your brain. Another really good supplement for mitochondrial health is called L-carnitine. It functions to transport long-chain fatty acids. Um, remember, Glucose is not the ideal source of fuel for your body. Fatty acids are. L-carnitine is synthesized by the amino acid precursors lysine and methionine. Dietary L-carnitine mostly comes from eating an animal-based diet like red meat, poultry, organic 
fish, wild caught, and dairy. Um, you know, you think vegetarians and vegans would be very depleted in this, but they actually don't get too depleted in it because the body compensating by compensates by less urinary excretion in uh, in these vegetarians and vegans. So that's kind of a, a body protective mechanism. You still may need a a um, a supplement of that if you're tired. And you know, there's some controversy about the TMAO, and I'm becoming less concerned with TMAO than I used to be. Um, you can talk to me about that in detail if you want, but I'm not so concerned as much as I used to be about um, a marker called TMAO um, anymore. You know, when it, when it's high, sometimes we've told people to restrict red meat and eggs because of choline, for one thing, um, and L-carnitine, but I, I just have changed my idea on that a little bit. And again, base it on how you feel, how much energy that you have. Um, Magnesium is another uh, mineral, the most important mineral, really. It stabilizes your ATP and makes it usable by the body. So the mitochondria actually stores our magnesium. And 80% of the world is deficient in magnesium. Almost everybody needs a supplement. Very cardioprotective, helps your bowels, helps energy, helps prevent cardiac arrhythmias. Magnesium is important. Take it at night. It helps you sleep. Um, another one is alpha lipoic acid. This antioxidant is targeted to the mitochondria. And it's tied into modulating the energy carrier NAD. Remember NAD, NAD+, plus, uh, very important. Other helpful supplements uh, for mitochondria, uh, creatine, the B vitamins. Remember, B vitamins are energy vitamins. Res resveratrol I like, and also I like CBD. It plays into that a lot as well. Um, so, in summary, think about the health of your mitochondria. Everything depends on it, really. When you take it down to a cellular level, what you need to do. Um, because if you're tired or you have cardiovascular issues or neurologic issues, consider adding these supplements uh, in addition to the healthy lifestyle we just talked about. Because they're very helpful. Let, energy, let your own energy be your guide. And if you're feeling tired, you can work your dose up of these things. They're very safe. They're not going to hurt you. Um, Remember, energy is life, and this is where it all starts. It's really fascinating stuff about this mitochondria and things you can do. So it's a whole host of things you can do to protect your mitochondria because it not only gives you energy, it prevents the breakdown and oxidative stress. It causes all these degenerative processes of aging and toxicity. So think about your mitochondria. Consider some of these supplements in addition to the healthy lifestyle that we preach every day. I hope this helps. Any questions, please come to us at Performance Medicine. We'll be glad to help out. This is uh, Dr. Rogers, Common Sense MD. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.